Here's an AMI This Week shortcut with Grant Hardy. When I get a random message from someone about how appreciative they are of me sharing the language, I, re I really appreciate that as well. So my name is Brendan Esham. I reside right now in Prince Rupert, British Columbia. I'm a second year science student at the University of British Columbia. And the reason why I'm here today is to talk a little bit about my app and website, somaliaword.ca, and talk about how that can help some of the blind community to be able to communicate in the traditional language of the Sushian, which is Somalia. For Brendan, preserving the traditional language of his nation by way of his educational website and mobile app is important. Or heal. The Somalia language, as I already said, the language of the Simshian is quite endangered and there's not a lot of fluent speakers left and it's always been a struggle for local organizations and local First Nations and local people to even have access to the language to be able to speak it and make it thrive. But in recent years, there's been quite a push to preserve the language, not only, not only to preserve it, but to make more people speak it. And I just wanted to be able to be a small part of that larger push to revitalize the language. And I feel like I've been somewhat successful in doing my part. In spite of his efforts, Brendan has also encountered some challenges. Apple wrongfully flagged his app as malicious, removed it from the App Store, and rejected his request to have the app restored. It was only thanks to press from negative news coverage that led to the app's ban being repealed. You're simply just trying to share the traditional language of the Simshian with no malice, and then you're accused of these things and you actually get all your hard work removed from the app store as well. And eventually, obviously, I did get it back, so that's the silver lining. But the real silver lining is that how much publicity I was actually able to get from the app being taken down, which may, I wouldn't say it exceeded the pain that was caused by the app being taken down, but it was certainly a silver lining. Sakai Net, Gil Net for catching Sakai. Adam Miso, Sakai Net, Adam Miso. The app certainly has generated a ton of interest worldwide, including from Harris Mowbray, a university student from Northern California who is passionate about computational linguistics and software programming. So I had heard of Braille just from reading Wikipedia, and I saw how many languages there were Braille for, but I also noticed how many did not have Braille, which is pretty much all of them in the grand scheme of things, considering there's 7,000 or so languages on Earth. Harris has reached out to many communities offering his services, creating Braille alphabets for their dialects, including for the Somalia language, after connecting with Brendan. We tried to make uh, uh, everything based off of international standards regarding Braille alphabets that were established by UNESCO around 1952 when we, uh, we made the decisions of what letters uh, are given what assignments. I'll give an example that uh, in Somalia there is a letter which is L with a slash through it mm -hmm. and it's very similar to the Braille symbol for L but with one dot moved uh, slightly. Uh, this O uh, makes it so that in Braille, those uh, two things are similar, just like how visually L is similar to L with a slash through it. It took Harris less than a day to produce the code. Brendan was impressed. I thought when I first saw it, I thought it was quite a slick design. It was quite visually appealing. I've never used Braille myself, but I could only imagine that someone that uses Braille would also think it seems quite beautiful as well. Harris's dreams are simple, helping people preserve their languages and cultures. I think that making Braille for one First Nations language is cool, but I want to make it for like 50 languages. I want to help as many as I can. I think this is just the first step in what could be so much larger of a project. 
ultimately, Brendan sees a positive movement to preserve Indigenous languages and cultures. Well, obviously there was impediments to learning it in the past, whether that be people being sent to school and not being allowed to speak it or stigma around speaking language. And that would obviously make it so people have or struggle to speak the language and speak it within their communities. But those effects or those causes aren't around any longer, but obviously they still linger and we still obviously so as i say we still feel those effects today but we're trying to overcome them and what i see is quite a, actually a positive outlook and i don't like to focus on the negative things i just like to focus on what we can do now <laughs>